All right, let's take your programming up a notch here. Today's lesson is going to be about timers, counters, and alarms. Basically, instead of stuff just happening right when the key is hit or uh, just randomly in the step, we're going to set it so the timing is very precise and we can control, start to control when things happen in the game. So basically, we have a few examples here for the first part that's going to use counters. Uh, you'll see there's a room set up for you here, and uh, I've already got a little bit coded inside the ship. Now what I've done in the ship is in the create, I've given it a variable called age. What I'm going to do is just to reinforce and review the step event, just show you how fast the step event is going. So step, step. And I'm just going to say age equals age plus one. Now, this is going to go up one time every step. And right now, the game is set to be 30 steps a second. I've actually already coded this inside of the draw event. And so you'll see here, I'm drawing the ship's age out okay, using with object ship. And so if we give it a quick run, we should see the age going up 30 a second okay just to reinforce this step event right it's counting up pretty fast now what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the step event here and we're gonna do a few tasks the first task we're gonna do is we're gonna do getting the tower this one here I've called it the paddle we're gonna get the paddle to fire once a second okay now, when we say once a second, we mean exactly once a second. And this is going to be the first way we show you how to do this is using a counter. So let's go to the regular paddle. And the idea is, is that when the paddle is created, I give it a variable that's going to count up. Now, it doesn't matter what we call this. Let's just call it counter. Very unique, exciting name. And we started off at zero. Now I'm going to make this counter count up in the step method. Let's go to the step. Counter equals counter plus one. And here I'm going to ask a question. If I want once per second, I know that the counter is going to hit about 30 in one second. So I can ask my little question here. If counter has reached 30, now I'm going to fire a ball. And that's just what I'll do. I'll just fire it to the left. Give it a little speed. Now, if I do this and I run the code, I want you to think what this is going to do. The counter is going to eventually reach 30. And when it equals exactly 30, it's going to fire the ball. The counter is going to continue to count up 31, 32, 33, 34. And it's just going to go on forever. Is it ever going to hit 30 again? No. And so what we'll see is we'll just see one single fire. And there it was after one second. And it never fires again. Now the simple extra line we have to add in here to make this work is we want this process to repeat. I can put the counter back to zero after I fire. Don't put it down there. If you put it down here, you can probably guess that every time you add one, it runs the if statement, maybe, maybe not it runs, and then counter equals zero. Counter is slapped back to zero every time. Okay, you don't want to put it back to zero every time, just after you fired, and that way the counter can start at zero and count back up to 30 again. This will give us pretty well precisely one fire a second. So you'll see the spacing there, right? It, this isn't like we did before with the step method and a random number where the firing was very random. 
which sometimes you want. This one is a precise rate. So this is one way you can get an object performing a task at a precise interval. Okay, so that's part one. The next example we're going to give you here, how you can control the rate, is going to be the player firing. Right now, I've coded the, uh, the spaceship that when you hold down the L key, so that's the keyboard L key, I can just hold it down and make lasers. So I'll just give you a quick view of what that's looking like. L for laser, easy to remember. You can see I can hold it down and mass produce. Again, sometimes that's good, sometimes that's bad. What I'm going to do is set it so the player can only fire once a second while the key's being held down. I'm going to use the same general idea here. So I'm going to go to the ship. I'm going to give a new variable. And I'm going to call this fire count. Now this is a capital C here, just in case you're typing. You get some errors. Make sure the spelling's the same. Fire count is zero. In the step method, I'm going to make the fire count go up by one. And when they go to fire a laser, before I fire, I'm going to ask a question. And the question I'm going to ask is I'm going to ask if fire count is bigger than 30, then they're allowed to fire. And just like the tower, if I do fire, I'm going to put the fire count back to zero. Now the player has to wait a couple steps, well, 30 steps for it to build back up before it's going to fire again. The nice thing is, is they can have that space bar, sorry, the laser key, L, held down, and this cycle just keeps repeating. It builds up, eventually you hit 31, you can fire, and then back to zero, and it just keeps cycling. So if I try this one and hold down, I'm just holding down the L key, and you'll see we get the same sort of effect. That's a popular one students often ask for, right? Controlling how fast a player can fire. Now 30, that's not very exciting for a game. Usually, you know, something like 6 or 7 is good. You want to give them a couple shots per second, right? Now when I held down the coal down the key, eh, you get a few more. So you can decide how often you want them to do it. So that's a great little addition there. Okay, another example of using a counter and the step method to decide when stuff happens. The last one I want to do here in this little video is a bomb. Okay, a little delayed fuse. You fire out a bomb and that bomb, boom, okay, explodes after a little while. What I'm going to do for that one is I'm actually just going to change this here. Instead of object laser, I'm going to change this to object bomb to save us some time. So now the player can fire bombs. But I'm going to code the bomb a little differently than the laser. Okay, I'm going to use a counter, and this time I'm going to do a counter that counts down. And when the counter counts down to zero, boom, okay, we'll explode the bomb. Okay, this is another popular one uh, people ask for. So let's just make sure the bombs are being made. Okay, perfect. Now, one neat thing we can do with the bomb here is bomb. We'll give it a counter and create. Uh, I don't know what we want to call it here. We can call it a counter delay age ticker. I'll set the ticker to 90. Going to get this ticker to count down. So that should take three seconds. I'll go to the step method. You'll notice the step method is becoming quite popular. Ticker equals ticker minus one. And ask a quick question. 
if the ticker equals zero, I'll make a little explosion. Uh, what do we hear? Color. And destroy myself. We don't put the ticker back to zero because the bomb's destroyed, right? The whole point of this one was just a one time go this time. Okay, a three second delay. Okay, so a nice little logic there. Countdown, when I hit zero, destroy. In the next video, you're actually going to see that this kind of task, there's another command we're going to learn about calling it alarm, where it makes this a little quicker to code in. And the run. One, two, three. Oh no, just off screen. So three seconds, a little too short there. Let's just go back. I had a bigger room before. Two seconds. Perfect, a little bit of delay on the bombs. This effect is great, especially if you have the bombs and you'll see in one of your challenges, it'll say, make pieces fly out. And the pieces also have their own age, so they only go so far, so it's like a little shrapnel effect. Okay, that's it for this video. Just sort of uh, give you a little intro primer on counters using the step event. Hope you got a little bit from there, have some good ideas. And uh, check out the next video. You're going to see, learn something called alarms that makes some of the stuff a little bit easier to do. Thanks for watching.